you guys know I'm a little bit obsessive, right? All right. Let's let's get rid of all this shit. Let's start over. We 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 got off on the wrong foot. Hello everyone, it's Adam here. Um I'm a little obsessive and I'm about to actually go through and sell some gear I don't use anymore. Which means I need to actually figure out what gear I have and what I actually want to keep. So when my girlfriend watches this after she gets home in a few minutes and watches me doing this video and says to me, Hey, I, I know that you should probably or She'll probably say to me, hey, I think you have too many gloves. Uh, this will be my, like, defense that I've told you all that I'm already going to sell these. So I want to I do some glove comparisons. I thought this would be fun. I just bought um, two new gloves for my riding season. I'll probably buy one more. And um, so I want to kind of talk through this process and what gloves I love and don't love and why. It might help some of you, maybe. So uh, let's start with winter gloves first. I have two notable winter gloves. I have these. These are really snowmobile gloves. These are uh, Gore-Tex Spider. Um, I bought these originally for ice fishing, um, and now they're kind of uh, my light-duty winter gloves. The reason why I say that is there is some thin slit in here, but it's uh, it's thin. The backing is it's pretty thin. So uh, when you put these on, they have really great grip. I mean, you can really grab onto stuff pretty easily. Uh, I like that the the wiper back here for your um, for your cleaning your shield off. They are Gore-Tex. Uh, they have windstopper, but there's there's no um, real strong padding. There's a leather backing, which is kind of nice, and they have the one pull tab here, which is great. Um, but you know, overall, fairly simple hundred dollar uh, gloves. I got a Dick Sporting Goods the first year I was riding, and they did the trick. But the back of my hands are still frozen, so against the wind, it's still kind of gets cold. And I usually judge gloves based on the ability to lock together. And these do lock together, which helps me not lose them. All right. Other gloves are the uh, Climb Climates. Again, they lock together. It's always nice, right? Uh, these gloves are actually um, my current winter gloves, and I love them. Love them. So what you have here, you've got uh, an awesome design where... Um, the front and the back, you have two different layers. So see this little climb logo right there? So if you put your glove, your your um, your hand on the back, you're gonna have more front um, um, uh, layer insulation. If you put your, uh, your hand in the forward area, you'll have insulation on the back. Of course, for me with heated grips, I put my, always my hand in the lower section because this is the more most uh, back heating, basically. Uh, again, same thing, you've got the leather backing on these two fingers. You've got a nice bendable layer here on the front, full leather front, which is nice. Um, I like these especially because not only do they, they, they have um, that extra layer where you choose front and back, but they also have a pull tab here and an additional pull tab right here. And if you have gloves on, it's kind of nice to, um, you can easily detach this and easily pull here to detach that. Um, as far as grippability, the only problem I have with these climate gloves is um, the thickness between the fingers is really thick. So when I squeeze, if I'm, if I'm on a long trip, what happens, even right now, when I squeeze my hands together, it actually hurts my pinky. And what's happening is my pinky is kind of being forced behind this. So it pulls at the tendon that comes along here, and it pulls the tendon here, and it kind of hurts. So um, I generally use these uh, if I'm not going to be aggressively riding. I'm talking about like a long touring trip where it's below 30 degrees outside, and I just kind of lightly hold the handlebar. If I have to really grip it to go into any crazy cornering, um, that, that hurts my right pinky finger a lot, and my, my other one too. So both pinkies hurt when I'm squeezing with these, but I'm already starting to sweat. They are incredibly warm. Uh, Gore-Tex, uh, Gore Windstopper, and a lot of, I think it's like 60 grams of thin slit. Really nice gloves. And the glass gloves I use for um, winter time, I love them so nice I bought them twice, are these uh, BMW, I think they're called like Pro Summer 3s. They're not really winter gloves. Here's the thing, they're full Gore-Tex. Um, I actually don't wear these during the summertime because I happen to sweat a lot through my hands. Let me throw these in the left hand here and show you guys what I'm talking about. But on the bottom, you've got a nice uh, helmet scraper. You get the full leather palm. You've got a nice uh, little pad right there. The back is this hard kind of knuckly stuff. 
but the fingers are mostly exposed. So if you were to go down, uh, your fingers would get pretty gnarled up. Uh, that's one thing about these knuckle things. Like the knuckle things don't do anything because you're really going to fall on your palm or scrape the back of your fingers. So uh, when I put this on, uh, they do seem thin, but they're really not. They offer a lot of warmth, and you'll start to sweat in these if you're not careful. Uh, the reason why I actually own two of them is because my first set was red. Both of them started tearing right here. So you can see right here where that bend is, that's starting to tear. And I think both of them are doing it. So I basically went ahead and uh, I love the red ones. So I replaced it with, uh, or added gray ones when I saw them come to sale on the used Adventure Rider forum. Uh, I think those are 150 new and I got the second pair used for 75. Um, these are my 50 to 60 degree gloves or if it's raining. If it's raining in summertime, I wear these uh, and they kind of get me into fall. And so nice, you bought them twice. Seriously, they're, they're really good. Um, so kind of, you know, you're looking at these, this is your November glove. This is your December, January, February glove if it's not snowing. And then this is gonna be our um, May and October glove or July if it's pouring down rain. Cold rain, not hot rain. Now we go to my most favorite gloves, the Klein Dakar Pros. They don't look like it, but I had two major crashes in these gloves. And actually around the world, Paul just did a post about his favorite gloves. And he was saying the same thing, that his Dakar Pros look like brand new, despite a lot of off-road crashes. And he's not, he's not lying. I mean, they, these, these things, you know, have really done well. Um, and and I'm, I'm so happy with them. So you've got a full leather inside here. You've got a little scratch spot right there. On the rear, you've got some padding, and you've got the padding on the back of your fingers too. Uh, let's put these on, I'll show you what they look like. These are all XLs, by the way, that I'm showing you guys. I've ridden these in the rain, um, and you you get wet. There's no there's no like uh, there's no way around it. The back of your hand is completely red, and your fingers will start turning blue because these uh, have a dye in them that will just bleed onto your hands. So you know they're 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 great gloves. These are the gloves that I truly wear um, more than any other glove. Sixty nine dollars. Non-sale price, nice stretchy fabric here for breathability. Um, they're fantastic. They fit me so well. You've got your uh, your visor clip cover here uh, to scrape off the water. I, I just think these things are so comfortable. And they're so nice. I bought them twice. Um, this is the 2016 Revision Dakar Pro Glove. And here is... And these are so nice. <laughs> And I bought them twice. <laughs> so what you're looking at here is a 2016 Dakar Pro versus the 2019 revision. This was just revised, same MSRP, 69 bucks. Um, you can see the similarities already, right? You got the um, the the rear Velcro. You have uh, the padding, which is a different design now, extending all the way to the fingers. You've got some reflective uh, bits here and here, whereas this just had a thin reflective line right there. Flipping them over, you've got uh, a much larger wrist pad, whereas before it was just right here, and you've got uh, a perforated um, uh, in, in, inside, whereas the other side was a whole piece. There was no perforations at all. Actually, I kind of like that this didn't breathe as much, but this is a personal preference. And then more perforations up to the fingers here. Let's put both of these on and see how they go. So as you open this up, You've got an opening here for easier slip on. You've got no pull tab at all. There you go, like that. That's the 2016. Now the 2018, same idea. But now you've got this pull tab right there. Now these aren't broken in yet, so, but they're noticeably tighter, uh, but I'm not gonna blame the gloves for that. I think it's just that they're not broken in yet, which is gonna change this year. So looking at these side by side this way, uh, you can see the 2019 on the left, how that differs from the 2016. Making a fist, these need to be stretched out. 
these kind of um, it's, it's hard to compare these because this is used. This has been about 8,000 miles. This is obviously zero miles. Uh, reflective bits, you have more of those. They're, they're a little bit bigger on this glove, whereas these, they were pretty thin, the reflective bits. On the other side, the perforations shining through, whereas no perforations there at all. So Dakar Pro 2019, 69 bucks. Uh, I'm not liking how they've relocated the scraper from, um, it used to be on the thumb right here. Now your scraper is on your index finger, right there. Um, I don't like this so far because of how hard it is to bend my fingers, like really hard, like like this is full motion and this is full motion, but that probably could just be the break-in procedure that needs to take place. So I'll get back to you guys in a few months on that. It might even be this thing here that's keeping that from happening. I mean, I think it'll eventually over time get better. All right, let's uh, switch it up now. Now these are purely dirt. These are the Dakars, not the Pros. Uh, so the Dakar is, I think, a $40 glove, <laughs> significantly cheaper. Um, on the rear here, you've got your pull tab. The, zip, the Velcro actually locks on your inside of your wrist, not the outside. Uh, no reflective bits at all. Um, no way to clean the, your visor off. The only protection you have on the rear is this little pad right here, and you've got a kind of rubber pads here that are pretty pliable. On the inside, um, this is a, a very like sticky, almost um, grabby adhesive texture. I think it's like a rubberized plastic and it extends up to these two fingers right here and that's it. You've got a nice opening right there. So put this on the left hand, got your pull tab. Uh, these are the gloves that I wear when we're strictly off-roading on the dirt bikes and it is hot outside because you want a glove that's gonna really just allow full range of motion it's comfortable, it breathes. I mean, you just feel every bit of wind coming through these huge perforations that are going throughout the glove. Um, and you've got a little bit of protection here on your fingers. These things are you know, low speed, crashes, get offs, no big deal. Um, but you're not gonna wanna, I, I, I wouldn't wear these on the, the interstate uh, highway, aggressive track days or anything. They're just gonna get shredded up because they're 100% cloth um, throughout there. I guess you could say there's a little bit of harder material here towards the bottom, but 39 bucks. Um, these are the gloves that, in my opinion, they pack down so small, you can just put them inside of a little sack, that um, they're great gloves for just keeping it in your tank bag or even in your pocket of your jacket. So when you guys do decide to go off-road, uh, spend the day off-road, and you've been wearing huge like touring gloves all day, um, take those off so you don't get too hot and throw these on and they're just nice to have. In fact, the guys at Moto Vermont uh, use these for their off-roading and they love them and they always keep a pair in their, um, in their panniers for um, off-roading. Honorable mention actually, another pair of $40 gloves. These are the Climb Savannas. Uh, these are Heather's gloves. So um, they are um, not really called an off-road glove, but they are uh, cheap. They offer, um, you know, good good protection, decent protection, nice grippiness, uh, good grippiness here with suede. Um, they're basic, right? But she only rides about 500 miles a year and always on the back. I can't fit in these, can I? Not a little bit. But smaller fingers, um, you know, they're nice. I, I don't, I don't. She never complained about them, other than the fact that it's below like 60 degrees. Her hands are cold, which. She doesn't really ride that much below 60 degrees. So that's not really a problem. But the Savannahs are nice. Actually, my sister, uh, I just bought these for my sister, and she loves them. She's in Florida, and she thinks they're fantastic. So um, very good entry-level women's glove with good enough protection for warm weather riding or off-roading. This is kind of a second honorable mention. This is my first pair of gloves <laughs> from 2016. Uh, I wore these for in a full riding season. Uh, March through November, and uh, well, they really fell apart, as you can see here. Um, they're just not. They're they're just. I mean, the thing is, and they're called Dry Star, but they don't keep you dry. Uh, the thing is about these is, despite being really comfortable, um, it's just really low quality materials. Um, none of my climb gloves have ever done this, and the Alpine Stars did within like five months of riding. Um, this part here goes up and around through this loop in the back, and then this comes down like this. Um, 
I still find them really comfortable, and I, I can still wear them. They're 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 great, honestly, for touring when you're not going to be getting wet. Um, but I've never crashed in them before, so I really can't say like, oh, the Apex, what they were called. I think there's only like 120, and uh, not good. But I'm just getting hot in them. They 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 were great for a three season glove though. As my only glove of that year, they were nice. Um, this is going to be hopefully my new touring glove on days that we're not riding in the rain. So I've kind of used the Dakar Pro for that, and I think the Dakar Pro is a little outside of its element for touring. Um, even though they've held it really well in some crashes, um, when it's a little bit damp or a little bit misty, they just fall apart pretty quickly. And the Inversion Pro has a wind stopper built in and course my famous uh, locking mechanism right here so when you look at these um, you've got reflective bits here that's it padding on the rear um, thicker padding on the rear here the finger covers come up and around you've got some bendiness there uh, that is that's sewn in other side for well, the velcro straps in the bottom of your wrist other side you've got a full leather palm um, these should work great for um, for touring, where you want a lot of like maneuverability on your bike, uh, in your hands, and you don't expect to be getting wet at all, because this is going to keep um, a lot of that cool air out. So I'm thinking like a 60 to set to 80, 80 Fahrenheit day, which is hot for us. Um, this is going to be the glove for me. It's not full gauntlet, but it really comes up there. So there's the inside, covers the Apple Watch unfortunately, um, really good maneuverability, I mean you just have that tensile-ness is here. Uh, it, feels, it feels great, I haven't ridden in these yet, but I'm going to assume they don't put a lot of wind through. There's no perforations that I can see that are visible at all, and um, I think they're going to be great, honestly. These are going to be my, my new touring gloves on warm days. And I'll keep the uh, Mojave's or the regular Dakar's or the Dakar Pro's as my off-roading gloves in my uh, tank pack. So that's my glove selection. Um, I don't know if there's any value to you guys. I also have, I think, like six climb jackets and three climb pants, four climb pants, and then a couple of Alpine Star suits. Um, if you want to have another video where I go through all the climb gear and my pros and cons of that, I will do that. I'm just kind of afraid to put that out there because it's basically going to be a video where I show off $4,000 worth of climb gear and it's going to open myself up for a lot of bullshit. So I don't know if that's actually something I want to do. But if there are people on this channel that would like to see a climb um, uh, wearable video, um, I'll, I'll do it for sure. So just let me know in the comments if that's what you want. I really enjoyed this. So this year we're adding the Climb Dakar Pro um, 2019 revision for 70 bucks, and we've added the Inversion Pro glove, which I think was also $70 uh, for 2019 as well to our collection. So, uh, and for those of you curious, this is kind of the Rosella boiler plate. There's the Inversion Pro text. You can pause and read that if you want to. And then here's the uh, Dakar Pro 2019 text. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate your time and uh, ride safe.